So what was that feeling like being in that life? Your dad, who was a hundred percent, fucking died in prison, mm. never turned. What was that moment when you decided? Because the police must rub their hands with guys in the mafia. They've got a guy to wear a wire, yeah. can get everybody. They've got you to turn. Yeah. They just get everybody to turn. They just play everybody to then turn on. They must yeah. just sit back and go, well, we'll get them eventually. But what was that feeling for you to then go, fuck this life? They're, they're trying to get me. I'm going to get them. It was, it, was, it, was, it was the hardest decision I ever made. It was To this day, I still wake up sometimes in the middle of the night and I feel terrible. It was just a hard decision, but it was something that I was done. It was like drugs. You know, I, I woke up one day and I was done using. It was just like I woke up one day and I was done living that way. I, you know, like uh, it, it was over. Like I knew it, I knew it was over. I knew, I, I knew that it wasn't worth it anymore. I mean, I, mean uh, I wasn't willing to spend the rest of my life in prison for that for that anymore. I, I, uh, and, and, you know, I, and I say this all the time because it's, it's the God's honest truth. If my father was alive or Tony Lee was alive, his partner, I would have never cooperated because I would have had to give them up. And I would never, ever do that. I would have never done that. So I, I think like all the stars are lined up for me to get out of that life and survive it, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and I made the decision, but it was it was it was it was it was a it was a hard, tough, really hard decision. I mean, it, I still have to live with it. I mean, all these years later, it's still sometimes I have bad days over it. See, if your dad was alive and you decided to cooperate with the government, would your dad have killed you? I would have never done that, but I think my father would have killed himself. That's what I think would have happened, because. Once, I don't want to mention their names because they're still out there. Um, my father was doing um, time with this other wise guy and uh, one of his relatives allegedly started cooperating and he came out in the visiting room and uh, my father looked at him and looked at me and goes, I can't believe this guy's walking around. If that was me, I'd kill myself. You know, and I have to live with that. You know, I, I, I would, first of all, I know if my father was alive, I would have never cooperated. But if I ever did cooperate and he was alive, he wouldn't kill me, but he would have died. He would have died of a broken heart. He would have, he would have died. What sort of deal then do you get from getting a murder, potentially been in prison the rest of your life to then cooperate with the coppers? What sort of deal do they put on the table? Well, and how do you trust them as well? well that's, that's a good question. So you sign what you do is you sign a, a, co a cooperation agreement and they give you coverage of, for all. And you have to basically tell them about every crime you know of, every crime you committed, and they give you what they call coverage for everything you weren't charged with. So they gave me coverage for all, like I extorted a, a, um, a water company, I extorted a, a, a vending company, so I got coverage for all that. Um, I was involved in a murder conspiracy to kill this guy, Frankie Geish. I got coverage. So you get, you sign a cooperation agreement and you get coverage. And the only promise that you make, they, they, they gonna, when you get sentenced, they're gonna, they write this paper up about your cooperation agreement and they give it to the judge and they recommend a sentence. And in my case, they were gonna recommend supervised release. Um, and then it's up to the judge basically, but normally, the judge is either going to give you like a couple of years or or, or or time served. In my case, thank God he gave me time served. But uh, you really don't know what you're going to get. But it's very strict. It's very it, you, it's very lim it's very strict. Like if you get caught on one lie, you're out. You get life. Any 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 deviation from the cooperation agreement, any making stories up or any lies you get caught in, you violate the cooperation agreement. You're finished. They 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 kick you to the curb. You get life. But if you cooperate and you testify when they need you when you get sentenced they give this they they they, they um they recommend the sentence and and usually 99 percent of the time the judge follows it like sammy the bull committed 19 murders he got five years um <coughs> uh, i i got time served when i got sentenced i got five years supervised released and time served because i testified at six trials so uh, I got time served. So it's all the, it's all up to the the U.S. attorney and how they present it to the judge. See when you eventually see when you turn snitch, does something die inside of you? A man who's lived that life, a man who respected his dad, even though you know it was fucked up, a man who's 
done murders, set up murders, robberies, you've done prison time, you've done nearly 20 years prison time anyway. What happens when you eventually start cooperating? Is it, what's that feeling? Is it a relief? Or do you think, fuck it, I've done it now where there's no going back? No, for me, it was sort of a relief because I knew I was done. I knew I was out of it. You know, there's, you, there's no going back. I mean, once once you talk, even if you even if you have a conversation with them and then change your mind, there's no going back. I mean, once once you open up the door and you talk to the government, whether you continue or not, you're finished with the mob. I was just relieved that it, I, it was done. It was over. I was out of it, and and uh, and I and I have to live with the decision. And uh, and it was. Uh, a new chapter, really. I mean, basically, that's what it was. And, you know, and and uh, it was a struggle, you know, for a lot of years, it was a struggle. You know, I lived in states that, I lived in Idaho. I mean, listen to my, <laughs> listen to our accents. Imagine you and I in Idaho. You know what I mean? Like, imagine me and you living in Idaho. You know, here I am, I'm living in Idaho. Uh, as soon as I open up my mouth, like everybody's staring at me. You know, they had me living in Washington State. You know, then eventually I went back to Michigan. Um, you know, uh, and then I winded up going back to this. But then, then you know, then um, I started making changes. You know, I was in recovery. You know, I went back to school. You know, then then it's like now, all right, now I'm free of the mob. Now I'm free of, I don't have to worry about going to prison. Now what? You know, now, now, now it's either, because a lot of guys in my position continue being scumbags and continue make, doing stupid shit. You know, not everybody that cooperates changes a lot of guys that cooperate still do the same nonsense which to me is ridiculous if you're going to cooperate and continue doing what you're doing what's the point so now now i have to make changes now thank god my life experience you know i i got an offer to work i got an offer to to move to florida to go work in a treatment center as a counselor and they put me back in school i went back to school um, and I'm now I'm already 60 years old now. So, cause when I, when I started cooperating, I was in my early fifties, but I couldn't do anything because I was testifying at trial. So the government and the witness protection program gave me money, you know, paid my way basically. And cause I was still co -op, uh, still testifying. But once that ended now, now it's sink or swim. Now I'm on my own. And uh, I went back to school at 60. I became a counselor. I worked as a counselor in the treatment center, which I'm still I'm still working in. Now today I work in a detox, you know. Um, so I went from being a taker to a giver. You know, now I help people instead of hurting people. So, you know, once I stopped cooperating, I had to make some changes. And thank God I, I made some changes for the good. See, when you had to testify in six different cases, did you have to take the stand six different times? Yeah, yeah, I had to testify. It was tough. The first one was tough. The first one I was on the stand for like three and a half days. That was the, that was a rough one. All of them were rough. I mean, you know, it's like you know, because you're getting attacked, you're getting called names. You know, I did a lot of scummy things. You know, I you know I was no you know I did a, and you know that all comes out. You know, but but you know I I I'm, I was I was I was okay with it because you know what I accepted the part I played in my life. You know what I mean? I accepted, like, yeah, listen, I, I, I accepted the part I played. And once you accept the part you play, you play in your life, it's okay. You know what I mean? Once I accept it and I, and, and I know I did it and I forgive myself for doing it, you know, I could talk about it, you know, and, and they ask me questions and I, you know, like, and, you know, and I say, yeah, like I, I was so honest testifying that the lawyer would tell me, Really? Like they were like surprised. Like I even answered truthfully. Like I stopped my honesty, stopped them f from going any further because they were ready for me to lie. And then they were going to like attack me, you know? And like, so there was a scenario when we fixed the jury in Miami, I was using at the time. So the juror wanted 25,000. So I came to New York and I got the 25,000 from my old man's partner tony lee and i went back to florida with the twenty five thousand. and when i met with the guy that was fixing the jury this guy billy victor i only gave him twenty thousand, and i said here i'm tell him we're only giving him 20 and i kept five thousand for myself and i blew it i you know i partied with it and the lawyers they knew that so when now I'm testifying and he's going to me. So Tony Lee, who was like your father, Tony Lee, who you loved, Tony Lee, who you lived with, Tony Lee, who grew up with your father, you literally, you robbed 5,000 of him, didn't you? 
And I looked at him and I said, yeah. And if I could have figured out a way how to rob the whole 25,000, I would have done that too. Because that was the truth. And he just stopped dead in his tracks. Because he was going to wait for me to say, I didn't take no money. What do you? And then they probably had a witness to say that, you know. So, so I just was an open book when I testified. But it was tough to testify. Because they, you know, but... Six different trials? Yeah, six trials. Who, who did you testify against? I testified against this guy, Skinny Dom. He was a captain. I testified against this guy, uh, Billy Vic, uh, Billy Bobby Glasses. He was in all murder trials. Uh, Charlie Koenig, uh, he, he was he was melting bodies in barrels of acid. I mean, he was really a crazy serial killer. He was crazy. This the guy that that this, the guy that ran over John Gotti's son. The guy that killed John. This was the guy that dissolved his body in a barrel of acid. He killed a friend of mine named Michael. He stabbed him. He killed him. I testified. So I testified at Skinny Dom's trial. I testified at Bobby Glass's trial. I testified at Charlie's trial. I testified at this guy Cyril Perone's trial. I testified at another murder trial of this guy Jimmy Bur uh, Johnny Burke. And then the last trial I testified at was the Lutunza trial with Vic Vinny Sarah, the sixth trial. Did they all get convicted? Five got convicted, one didn't. One got found not guilty. See, because you done testified so many trials, is that because the amount of information you gave? What happens if you just gave one or two? Yeah, it was, uh, plus it was historic. It was, they called me what they call a historic witness because I knew the structure of the mob and I knew, so, you know, you got to understand, I was in the streets since I'm 16 years old. Now I'm in my 50s. So I've been, I was out and I was Fat Andy's son. So I knew a lot of people. I knew a lot of things. I was, a, I did a lot of things with a lot of people. So they called me, what they called me was a historical witness. So they would call me, like I knew you were a captain. I met you as a captain and I would testify, yeah, I met so-and-so. He was a captain in the Bonanno family. But like, um, well, I committed, no, I didn't, because I didn't commit crimes with all of them. I committed crimes with Dominic. I committed crimes with Johnny Burke. And I committed crimes with Vinnie Asara. So out of the three trials, I committed crimes with the other trials. I knew of. I was involved in the aftermath of their crimes, their murders. Like with a uh, with a uh, Charlie Koenig, he killed my friend Michael. We had to sit down with them. Like I, so that was what I testified. Like he killed my friend Michael. We had to sit down at you know, and so I, I had some historical information. Bobby Glasses. He killed uh, with Frankie Geish. They committed a double homicide with Frankie Geish, who was with us. So I had intimate knowledge of the murders. So I testified at those kind of trials, trials like that. Could but people I, could people sort tell lies though? Could people make up lies that they were here? Is it just your statements that convict well, them? You could lie, but believe it or not, the government knows the truth. Everything they because the wires listen, and shit. Yeah, they, listen, when I was proffering with the government, they new shit that I forgot about. They told me stuff I did and I went, like, how did you know that? Like, they know everything. They, they know, we shot a guy years ago, we shot a guy named Louis Baja. Like, I forgot about it. Like, and he didn't die. When he got shot, he didn't die, but he got messed up and he went back. He was a Puerto Rican kid. He went back to Puerto Rico. I forgot about it. I, and I didn't think anybody even knew about it. And I'm proffering, and one of the, the agents tell us, okay, now tell us about Louis Baja. I almost fell out of the Louis Baja. How the fuck do you know about Louis Baja? They know everything. They know everything. So for you to lie, it's dangerous. Once you sign that cooperation agreement and you're going to lie, you know, like gas pipe, like people that lied got thrown out of the program <clears throat> and got life. So if you're going to lie... You're playing a dangerous game with the government. Don't play. When you sign that cooperation agreement, any little deviation, you're gone. They kick you to the curb. They have no use for you. You once they have no use for you, you're finished. See when you had to sit in the dock, where you what was the eye contact like? Were you just looking down when I signed the cooperation? No, agreement? when you were had to take the stand. What was that like? It must have been when I had tiring. to take the, when yeah. I had to take the stand. I made sure I stared in everybody's face. I don't want I, I I wouldn't give anybody because not that I was proud of what I was doing because I was far from it. But I wasn't a punk, and I wasn't going to cower. So when I walked into the courtroom before I sat down, I looked right at the person I was testifying against. I looked right in their face, and then I sat down. And then and then once the questioning starts, 
you get its tunnel vision, then it's just you and whoever's questioning you and you sort of block everything else out. But I made sure every time I sat down, I looked at the person that I was testifying against and only one of them ever like, it was funny because we had like this moment in court, like Vinny Asara, he just had passed away, the poor guy, but he was a captain in the, the Lutunza case. That was the, he, he got found not guilty, which was amazing. So we had this moment, like they brought me out to the, into the courtroom. And for some reason, he was the only one there with the agents and his lawyer. The jury wasn't there or the judge wasn't even there. And they, usually they brought me out after the jury came in, but they brought me out, the agents. And, and, and as I was sitting down, I looked at him and he was sitting there and he called me a rat. Like that, and I went like this to him, and I looked at him, and I just went like this, and I gave him the finger like that, and he, he was so mad. He was so mad, you know, but I, and I just looked at him, and I went like this. I told him like that. He was so mad. Oh, my God, he was jumping around. But, uh, yeah, no. Uh, but once you start testifying and the lawyers start, especially when you're getting cross-examined because they're coming, they're coming for you, you know, defense lawyers are coming for you, and it's like, it's like tunnel vision. You just zoned in on what's happening and you you don't see nobody else. Because obviously people will call you a rat this and that, but they've never yeah. lived that life. They don't know the life. Everybody's a fucking snitch seem yeah. bit by the looks of it. But see, it may sound weird, but see when you were actually testifying and giving statements, was it actually like a therapy for yourself? Just fucking releasing everything that you bought yeah, up it was, here? Yeah, it was just, you know, well, not when I was testifying. When I profited, when I met with the agents and the U.S. attorneys, after I was done, like they were all day sessions, I was just like relieved. It was just, you know, it was just coming to an end and, you know, and and, and it was over, you know. I was just ready to, to move on at that point, you know. I The only, I was just ready to move on. I knew that I didn't want to live that way anymore. It's like I just didn't want to do it anymore. I didn't, I didn't want to live that way. I, I wanted to do something else. I didn't want to go to prison anymore. I didn't want to. I didn't want to commit crimes anymore. I mean, I, my whole life was a crime. 